Can nah, I tell you? management will absolutely kill. You know something? You man, you managed Outcast for thirteen years. Mm-hmm. What was that breakup like? Painful, hard. It was. Um, I mean, I gotta believe these were your friends. I know y'all did mm-hmm. business. Little together. brothers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, these are your brothers at this point. Mm-hmm. So, so, was, so. Did, did they walk away from you? Did they fire you? Did you walk away from them? What, what did that look like? I, I'd like to say we all walked away from each other. We, I think that. So here's the thing about Outcast. We put out six studio albums, and then two like the greatest hits and some and the soundtrack. Go back and check your greatest rap groups that you've seen, three tops, maybe four. You don't you don't get to like rap groups don't stay together like that to get to six, seven, eight albums. In doing that, in keeping yourselves together, in 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 in, in do, there's sacrifices that come with being in a group, whether it's a rap duo or a four piece band. That's why they don't last long because everybody, some people get tired of their sacrifices. Big and Jay had been doing this since they were 17, 18. There have been a lot of compromises. Big is one way. Trey is another way. There was a lot of tugging and pulling. And I spent 12 years of their lives tugging, pulling, pushing, slapping. Like just whatever I needed to do to get across the next finish line. And I think it was kind of like as we finished up Idlewild and everything, it was kind of like, burnout and just kind of it was kind of like so technically me getting fired was the first straw to fall technically but it ended up being a walk away time for everybody to take a break so outcast never broke up big and Dre still talk they're just not making music together as outcast right now and that was very important to me because I've studied the game and I realized that when you break up or you announce a breakup, your fans lose interest. They lose hope. They're over it. If you're fed up with it, they're fed up. But so long as you're still kind of together and there's a chance, there's a smidgen of hope that you guys might get back again and do an album. You might look up and be 15 years later and people are still like, when are y'all doing a new album? Because you never broke up. And that's kind of where Outcast is now. People what just one of the outcast album. They're not mad at either guy, but they want to do outcast album. That was you me. Know, it's it's interesting because clearly Big is still out there. He's working. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dre, I mean, this is a guy who you know, he's he's been to Hollywood, he's done movies. You know, they they it was recent that um it, it was just stamped that they had the biggest selling rap album of all time, mm-hmm. right? Love Below I mean, Speaker Box, 13 million. Correct. I mean, these, mm-hmm. these, these guys are mainstream. They're rock stars. But I, I literally just saw an Instagram the other day with Andre in Japan, I think, playing a flute. <laughs> like, <laughs> is this, so, it, like, like, real talk, like, you, you have... <laughs> these dudes, it, they're as big as they come. Like th- this is this is rock and roll big. You don't mm-hmm. sell thirteen million records, and you're unknown. Mm-hmm. Y- you can't go no place on the planet, and anywhere you go on the planet, the red carpet is rolled out for you. D- mm-hmm. Did you ever see it coming? Where Dre was just gonna throw his hands up to the industry and just be like, "Yo, I just want to go do me." I mean, he's been spotted in Seattle. He's been spotted in Japan. Like I said, I just saw the man with, it looked like a... A, a, a flute. A, yeah, it looked like a flute he was playing with, with a turban on his head. It's his flute, yeah. Um, again, Gemini, free free thinker, free spirit. Um, a lot of artists just want to get famous and rich so they can be hot on their block. They want to be hot around the neighborhood. They want to be hot in their family. They just want to be hot. Some artistic people see the art as a path to freedom, to be able to 
travel the world, learn things, experience new things, um, embrace different culture, um, not be a prisoner of the nine to five or whatever cycle that people get caught up into. Dre's that type. Dre's just enjoying his life. He's just, music isn't his sole driver. And Jimmy Iovine told me this a long time ago. He said, Bruce Springsteen is, is like this. And, and as I, I've always read, there's some artists that like that. When money isn't their driver, it's hard to find the motivation for them. Like, you have to figure out what excites them. What's going to get them motivated to do what they, what they do so well? Which to all of us, if we could do what they do, we would be doing it, killing it, doing it all the time. But they're bored with it. But they're over it. It doesn't keep their attention anymore. But they're so good that the world wants them to do it. But they don't want to do it just because the whole world wants them to do it. And so they search. They travel. They, they, they try new things. They find things they like. It's, it's so rare that we see a black person do it. We just don't. It's like this, this oddity to us to see Dre doing it. But really... He's just kind of living his life, enjoying his life, not bothering nobody. And just right now, not interested in, in doing Outcast raps. You know, you hope that he comes back. So when Outcast first, when you said it was difficult, here's the thing. It was completely difficult. I felt it was, just, I dealt with depression. I was getting high. I was doing everything I was to try and figure out because in my mind, I'm trying to figure out what I did wrong. How could I have prevented this? What could I have done differently? And eventually you have to come to realization there's nothing that you could, just things maybe along the way you could have done a step differently. Or, or that, and, and that's you thinking that that would have done it. No proof that that would have done it, but you're thinking it would have stopped the process. But the reality is eventually you have to come to the realization that he's a grown man making his own decision. And are you going to respect his decision or are you going to be angry about the decision he made? I had to reconcile not being angry because I was very angry for a long time. I lost $25 million in one year because of his decision. I had to make a decision to get over that anger. And that required me to talk to him a couple of times and let him know how angry I was. It just required me as a man to learn how to deal with emotions that nobody I know has ever dealt with. It's not, I don't know many black men that have lost $25 million and they did everything right. Like not ego wise, but I did everything I was supposed to do without care. I turned them into the biggest rock group in the world. The payout was us going on tour and stuff. And when Dre decided not to do it, he didn't want to go on tour. So we lost a tremendous amount of money on touring opportunities and stuff like that. So I had to learn, as Big Boy did, how to respect our brother and his choices and our friend while reconciling what we were losing in, in, in what we had all worked to build. And so... Yes, it was difficult. Um, yes, it's something that will haunt you for a long time. Um, <laughs> but you also, I like to find similar um, stories of paths in life. When I'm dealing with something, I, it helps me to maybe find someone that's been through something similar to give me a, a route to see what the other side can look like and that I can get to the other side. So Irving Azoff, who I mentioned before, who's a legend in the game, um, has managed everybody, built Live Nation up. This is, this is the real, the king of this, this manager shit, right? Um, he managed the Eagles in the 70s when the Eagles were the biggest band. The Eagles, same thing happened. The lead singer of the Eagles walked away. The Eagles broke up while they were at the top of the world. Left Irving like, what? What do I do? This is like 1974, right? Irving had to gather himself up, lift himself up, and figure out how to proceed. He went on to become president of like Capitol Records, a giant or whatever like that. Started his management stuff back up. He survived. What he never did was, he never went at the Eagles, he never attacked them, he never did nothing, he chilled. 30 years later, 25 years later, the Eagles decide they want to get back together. They call Irving. Now Irving's this super powerful guy at Live Nation. And over his last 25 years, he's learned all the tricks and levers so when the Eagles get back together, he now knows how to make them the biggest touring legendary artists in the world. And the Eagles start making $50 million a summer for the last 10 years they've been making that. Recently a member died, 
Irving's getting older. They're all in their 70s now. But through their 60s, all he did was print money with the Eagles. So in my mind, I've always been like, there may come a time, there's hope. Dre may call up one day and be like, yeah, you know what? I feel like doing it, folks. And to me, my job is to know where the $25 million, $50 million uh, uh, summer checks are when he calls and when they're ready. So part of my brain is always kind of trying to figure out if I got to call tomorrow, what would it look like? Which is probably not healthy, but the therapist would probably say you're holding on to stuff, but that's, the, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's the, that's the method I watched somebody else do and they had a successful career. And, you know, I also am at a stage where I don't enjoy management as much. Um, it's not the same game that I grew up in, as you know. This isn't the same business that we started. We're not, it's not the same. It's a, it's a popularity contest right now. It's not a talent show. You and I got in the business, it was the most talented wins or the most talented gave you the best chance to win. This ain't got shit to do with talent. This is popularity. Can I manipulate algorithms and can I say the most ridiculous shit in the world? So I get the looks and the views and the views translates into likes and the likes translate to labels. That ain't me. So, my love for management has changed in my current form. So it's kind of different now to me when I look at certain things and when I look at the management game and the music industry and everything, it's kind of, it's lost some of that, that glow. But, and for people like yourself, I'm sure as well, those of us that legitimately right. were in it, it's changed. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.